This is Twit. Organizations, they're really racing ahead. They want to use containers. They're starting to deploy to them, but they might be going too fast. Is that right, Kurt? Absolutely. And in, in particular, a new study says that organizations are turning to containers even though they're not really confident in the security of those containers. Now, containers, which, as we know, are virtualized applications rather than virtualized operating systems, are key to DevOps. And they're maturing as critical parts of enterprise application infrastructures. Even though the security stru- uh, inf- strategies for containers are maturing, organizations stay th- say that they are still struggling to have security keep up with the other facets of container deployment. Now, this last week, StackRox issued a new report it was based on research by the Aimpoint Group. And it shows that more than a third of companies haven't begun to implement a container security policy yet. While 15% say that their company is in the planning stage with container security strategy, 19% say that they haven't even gotten that far yet. Now, part of the problem, according to StackRock CEO Kamal Shah, is the complexity of the environment into which containers are being deployed. While many people think of containers as solely a cloud uh, technology, Shaw says that they found that 70% of people are running containers on-premise and 53% are running in hybrid mode. And that means they're running it in a combination of on-premises and in public cloud platforms. Now, the reasons that companies are turning to cloud, uh, containers is pretty simple. It's a very fast way to deploy applications, especially it's a fast way to run through the Agile and DevOps methodology of development, get it into production as fast as possible. Still, we are finding that there are an awful lot of holes in container security. Let me give you an example. One of the things that people do to speed up container deployment is get pre-made images off of public repositories, bring them in-house, and deploy them. Saves them a bunch of time in putting those images together. <clears throat> well, Jerry Gamblin, who is a principal security engineer at Canada Security, scanned the 1,000 most popular application images and found that over 60% of the top Docker files held a vulnerability with at least a moderate risk store. And over 20% of the files contain at least one vulnerability that would be considered high risk. When looking at the source of the vulnerabilities, the StackRock report says that poor deployment and poor filtering are principal problems. And according to the report, 60% of executives say that the misconfiguration represents the greatest risk. Now, I'm going to turn to my co-host because we've seen misconfiguration as the culprit behind not only container uh, breaches, but cloud breaches. And we're going to address that in a second. But first, and I, I've got to turn to you, Lou. Are containers really ready for prime time, or is this still a technology that that needs to be baked a little more thoroughly? You know, I think that they are ready. I think that they they are just there to. For, for organizations that are they want to be able to scale out their, their infrastructure. They want to be able to scale out their applications. The concept is there. The technology is there. It's just that we're at this point in, in the timeline where things require a lot of investment to get configured, to get secured, uh, and to be able to uh, scale well. And I think that that's just the reality of any technology when it comes to services. I think you see that with a lot of things. Um, you first see... Uh, managed uh, services than unmanaged services. And I think we're in the stage with containers where organizations, they need to educate themselves uh, with how they're actually deploying these things and how they're securing them uh, before they actually make large decisions, move applications there. Because they know that once they do, they can scale it out. They can develop a scale out story when it comes to containers and they can service them easier and they can deploy easier. But what does that mean from a security perspective and from a setup and configuration perspective. So I definitely think the technology is ready. It's just that 
there is a lot more providers out there and a lot more services that need to spend more time on on kind of combining things together so it makes it easier for people to be more secure out of the box. You know, I agree. And and I'm going to turn to, to Brian. Brian, Lou mentioned the idea of the, the providers making things easier uh, by combining them, putting them together, packaging them up in a way that makes it easier to deploy secure containers. My question to you is that we've seen all these issues with default settings in containers and clouds. Is it time for the providers to revisit what they're doing with their default configurations and go to a security first philosophy of setting up their configurations? Um, bottom line, yeah. <laughs> There's way too many really badly chosen default settings. Um, I want to actually set the Wayback Machine, especially since I'm staring at Mr. Peabody, and say that, you know, I first saw containers appearing as a way for the marketing people to get um, their product out in front of um, potential buyers faster and for less costs on supporting it. So let, let's put this in perspective. There's an awful lot of product out there that the initial configuration, um, the install process is god awful complex. And this was a really big problem for marketing and salespeople because then they would have to allocate a ungodly amount of money in support time just so that someone can set up a free demo. And this just didn't make sense to a lot of these people. Income containers. Oh, we can have a demo system completely set up and ready to go. All they have to do is run the container and they can demo our system. And now all of a sudden our liability for demo systems goes way down. Great. Let's do it. Well, here's the problem. Now that we're starting to use containers for production systems, I think we still have the stigma left over from those demo systems where we're trying to set it up so that one size fits all. And I think that's going to be my watchword for this whole concept. One size does not fit all. And too many people that are playing with containers take it right off the shelf, install it, and expect to not have to do any tweaking. Um, that, I think, is a big mistake. And I think we need to slow down. We need to make sure that we actually swing the pendulum back and say, hey, you know, once we get that container installed, there must be follow-up. And I don't think that's happening in enough cases. So the reality is, I'd like to say is, yeah, default configurations um, too often are badly, badly chosen. You know, going for let's get it up and running so that you can start paying us money faster is a very dangerous attitude. Um, just the fact that, you know, a node red container that I was playing with came with no HTTPS turned on and no logins turned on. So I had to go and tinker to turn both those on. In reality, both should have been on by default. Well, Lou, Brian makes a bunch of good points. And I, I want to turn to you sort of for the last word. You know, what is it about containers, a, a technology that was designed to be pretty darn simple? It's so hard. I mean, we see companies missing on the same points over and over and over is the issue with the technology or just with the way that companies are addressing deploying on containers yeah i mean this is the the constant battle that like you know organizations like docker and kubernetes are handling is they're saying hey how do we um how do we actually host and deploy these things? And how do we make it easy for apps to be actually be hosted on them and so on and so forth? And so they're constantly tr trying to figure out um, how to make things easier. And I think that, um, you know, like you said, the concept is fairly simple, right? Uh, but the, 
usually usually the execution with a technology, even though it's simple, is not easy. And I think that comes where where containers is. I mean, the container concept might be easy, but there's a lot of technology and layers that go along with it. And then there's also the CI CD portion of it. Is you know, once I have an application that I've potentially built more cloud native, more container native. Now, how do I get to make sure that it's constantly deploying, constantly integrating, and um, it's doing that, and it's scaling, and it's load balancing, and it's doing all these things? Um, and you know, if you configure it just in just minutely wrong, you can run into potential uh, security issues or, or 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 even just reliability issues. And I think that that's where we're running into is just that's where the technology is right now. And it's something that, you know, either a startup or these uh, these organizations like Docker, Docker Swarm, Docker, Kubernetes will figure out um, as things go along, as more and more people use them. But I think it's it's just the current uh, the current state of affairs. Well, we know that it's going to, to remain complex for a while uh, because containers aren't going anywhere. They're just too darn useful. Look forward to continuing to cover this and hopefully cover it from a perspective of something other than, darn it, we still don't know how to deploy them securely.